Hi, I'm Christina Applegate. And I'm Jamie Lynn Sigler. And this is Messy. Hi, guys. Hi. Let's do this. Are we going to talk in that voice of I, um, sometimes from SNL? Oh, you have a good one. Talks about lady balls or what is that <laughs> sketch? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, right? What's a lady ball? I need no, to know. No, you anyway. remember that sketch that was on SNL of the two women doing like a radio show and yes, they were really like of course. And talk about yes. like weird stuff like balls. Yes. Um so here we are. We've talked about this for quite some time and we're finally doing it. This is Jamie. You want to introduce yourself? Christina. I thought we would do our full names. Would you like to say who you are? Sure. I'll do my full name. My name is Jamie Lynn Sigler. But if you know me well, you would just call me Jamie. So that's how I would prefer to be called in this realm, because I think we're going to get really up close and personal here. I feel like I really have to get close to my microphone now. So it sounds as sexy as your voice. Um, (laughs) My name is Christina. No middle name. Uh, Fruit Fence. At all? You have no middle name? No, they couldn't think of anything to go with Christina and Applegate. You know what? Cause Christina, Christina Applegate is a really solid name. I get it. It's pretty solid. People thought that I made that up and I'm like, really? <laughs> anyway. It's um, not your stage name. It's your real it's not name. My, no, it is my given. It's my given. I was named after a painting. We'll get to this in two seconds. In two seconds, I'm going to tell you something really weird. Anyway, I wanted to say we are, two actresses Mm -hmm. who have this really fun uh, sidebar called multiple sclerosis. Yeah, that's a beautiful pronunciation. I like the way you (laughs) say it better than anybody else does. (laughs) Multiple sclerosis. (laughs) Anything with an Italian accent sounds better. Doesn't it? Or multiple sclerosis. I can do French. (laughs) I can do all things. I can't do Australian. Never. Can't nope. don't ever Real ask hard. me. Yeah, so this is our conversation about stuffs. Yes, yes. Well, Christina and I have known each other for a, a long time through mutual friends, and we've had several hangouts here and there. But I think, un, unfortunately, but fortunately, we have each other. What's really bonded us and what's brought us here to. This moment is the multiple sclerosis. Sclerosis. Um, I can remember I got a text from our mutual friend, Mr. Lance Bass. And bye, telling bye, me, bye. Bang, 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 bang. that's right. Bye. Um yeah, telling me famous. in um in confidence what you had found when you had found out the news. And it was like another one of those things. So you know, Christina and I have very different um Well, I've had this disease for 22 years, and she's very new to this life. Not to say that my experience makes me any more knowledgeable or any more, uh, like, have any more credit. I mean, like, living with this, it's it's very unique. Oh, that that little MS street cred that we all like to have. (laughs) That's right. That's right. That's what I'm basically trying to say. I have no more street cred than you. But it was one of those moments where I was like, you know, anytime I hear somebody that has it, it's like fuck yeah like it's just god another one no like another great person that i just don't want to have to live with this but at the same time um you were you were honest and open and vulnerable in a way that took me 22 years to get to so as much as you sort of looked at me, looked to me initially to be like, what am I getting into? What do I need? Where do I go? Am I going to be okay? You opened this door to me for me to be like, yeah, this sucks. Yeah. Cause it, I really for a long time was afraid to say that because I thought it meant I was losing. Yeah. You know? So and- I, th- go ahead. No, no, continue your thought. Finish your thought because I have something to say upon that. No, I've already forgotten well. it. Go. Okay. Yeah, because we have 
We have MS. <laughs> <laughs> you know, finding out two years ago that this was now going to be my life, I was in the middle of shooting something and yeah. I was scared to death of, I could, and, you know, I was already past the point of hiding it. It was now very much like at work. Like I couldn't walk. I couldn't stand for very long. I couldn't do all the things. And you, thank God for Lance and, and Michael, and, you know, these are beautiful friends that we love so much, um, put me in contact with you. And, you know, I had heard about you having it and didn't really, I didn't really understand what it was. I just thought like, oh, it's a death sentence. Like you're just going to die. Like I mm -hmm. honestly like thought that's what it is, but I didn't understand what it was. But one thing you said to me was set your boundaries. And if you hadn't said that to me, I wouldn't have been able to finish up the last season of my show mm -hmm. and do it because you gave me that power because I was scared. Been a workhorse my entire life, a child actor and you show up on time, you show up early, you do everything for yourself, you don't ask for anything, you work the 18 hours and you said, set your boundaries. And yeah. you shared some really personal things that we you know, can talk about or not talk about, it's up to you, but you really got me through that last few months of, of working. Aww. So I really want to thank you for that. For oh, sure. I love you. But you I know, I love you too, Mama. I think that like, that's just it's such an important lesson for anybody, like MS or not, whatever you're living with. Like, you get to a certain point in life where you learn how to set boundaries. And I think in our business and in our industry, especially, I think when you grow up in it, like we did, especially you. I mean, you really grew up in it. Like, you want to please and you want to do your work and get your mark and make everybody happy. And I, you know, for me, I lived with it as a secret for 16, 17 years. I can't and believe so you did it was that, like, Jenny. I cannot believe me you lived either as a secret. Me neither. And it, you know, it's because I could for quite some time until I couldn't. And then it became this like long series of lies. I have a back issue. I must have tweaked my ankle, you know, because I got away with it as long as I could until people would be like, are you limping? Is you, are you okay? And I'm like, you know, just brushing it off, brushing it off because I just didn't know what that would mean for me to say it out loud, to have anybody know, I'll probably get fired, who would want me? And then, you know, it just became this terrible cycle of me working, the doing the opposite of what you should do as an actor, like planning exactly how I needed my scene to go so that once I was there, all I had to worry about was my body. And I was not doing my best work and I wasn't proud. And I had to take a step back and a step away to kind of really reevaluate my life and I really knew I still wanted to act and if I was going to continue to do that I had to set boundaries I had to be honest and I had to set the boundaries and now every job I ever take I have a call with the director and I say listen here's what I can do here's what I can't do as long as we have this squared away we're good I'm going to show up and do my job and you don't need to expect any, like do anything extra or anything special for me. And if this is going to be, if you feel like this isn't going to, it's going to get away with your creative vision, or if you're going to feel like this is going to be anything other than easy, I don't want it. Cause then we're not going to have, neither of us are going to be happy. And I'm so, I'm proud of myself that I've gotten to that point, but it's bled over into my personal life as well. And so I think, you know, and we'll get into it so much of kind of what this also has taught us, not just what it's taken away, but yes, the boundaries thing is, was huge. Well, you, you definitely helped me and our set learn, you know, everyone was learning at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, of course, no one on the set was touched by MS. They were not, you know, I mean, as far as, you know, our production, our directors, our writers, our, you know, creator, except for one other person on there has been touched by MS. And that person was invaluable to me and in telling me like, you can't be in heat. We need to have the set be cool. 
like different li little things that I didn't even know about because I found out on a Monday night at 7 p.m. after I had just worked for 12 hours, I found out I had MS um, through a Zoom call with my doctor. And I had to call them the next day and go, guess what, guys? It's not peripheral neuropathy or whatever they were telling me it is. I have a disease that's progressive and degenerative and this is the deal. And I don't know how to deal with this. And I'm supposed to be at work at six o'clock in the morning tomorrow. And, you know, that all those things uh, came into play and we were all learning together mm -hmm. um, what I could do. And, you know, there were days where they were like, well, do you think you can do three more takes of walking across the room? And because of you, I was able to say, uh, no, I, I honestly can't. And it's not because I don't love you guys or yeah. I don't care about what we're doing, but I can't. And I've been pushing through this for a while now and I'm taking my, my power right now. Yeah. And, and I, as you were saying, like, it's, you know, I keep saying that I'm going to stop doing this because I'm afraid that I'm not going to be on a set that is going to be inclusive to what my my needs are our needs are and and I'm gonna let you say that for now because this is still very new and I think that there is a grieving process that yeah, goes I'm on only, yeah I'm, I'm two years so I'm still and you also bad. like through COVID and also like the lead of an epic show that you know was on depended on you and your talent and yes you had a beautiful support but like that's a lot like you actually are right now dealing with it like you had a, a babies are yelling babies they're like yes we know yeah see that's that's i will always say confirmate yes that's a yes from the from the dogs thank you uh, thanks but yeah, i think you're just dealing with it now and that's why i've always said like i will let you say that you are done acting for now but I think that there's, first of all, you're you. Like you are amazing and wonderful and important and so talented. And your talent is very singular and special. And there's no other person that's like you. And I think if you're willing, which is a place that I am only just willing to get to, but I think that you will get there faster than me. If you're willing to just play a woman that moves the way you move or that has MS or whatever it is, because we know very well, yes, I have MS, but I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I'm a friend, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a lot of fucking things that, yeah, MS makes all of those things a lot harder for me, but they don't stop me from fulfilling all of those roles in my life. So to say that if you played a woman that had MS, it would have to be all about MS is bullshit. And if anybody yeah. could... I can't do that. It would be too sappy, soupy, soupy. No, barf. it doesn't have to be soupy or <laughs> sappy or whatever. It can be hilarious because you and I know, like you and I have had many long conversations and we still laugh about the absurdity, the, 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 the bullshit that we deal with. It's still, we, you have to find humor in it. I'm not telling you anything you don't know or anybody doesn't know, but I think that there is whatever. I'm not going to press that on you now. But I, I do know that that's in your future, our future, whatever it is. I do miss that because, you know, in all honesty, the only thing I ever had my entire life was work. You know, I had a really shit upbringing. I had a shit cards dealt to me as a kid. And I lived, I grew up on sets. Yeah. That's where I grew up. It's all I know. The all the inner workings, the outer workings of being on a set is all I really know. I'm, I'm the best first AD you'll ever have. I'll be, I'm the best, like, I'm the best costume. Just, like, I, like, I love that place. And, you know, I've taken this last, you know, since we stopped working to implode, explode, be sad, watch a lot of crap TV, do whatever I need. I've never been able to sleep in. So it's, been really nice to like not have to be somewhere and not mm -hmm. have to be on and push, you know? Um, yeah. But I know that at some point I'm going to be like, okay, when, when does someone need me somewhere? And when does someone a care? a lot of hands that will be raised. I know, but I gotta, no I gotta work on, I don't know. I physically just don't feel good. 
obviously, and I physically don't look like myself um, from lymphedema, which is something that we can discuss later on. Let's discuss on. it. What is it? What is lymphedema? lymphedema? I don't know. So, okay. So one of the symptoms of MS can be lymphedema where your lymphatic system is not draining. Um, because as we know, MS slows down our organs, slows down our systems, our digestive system, our brains, our all the things. I unfortunately have gotten lymphedema. So I don't know if it's from my medication or if it's part of, you know, I'm not a doctor, so I don't want to sit here and say that this is because of MS, mm -hmm. but my lymphatic system is not draining. So my hands are swelling up, my feet are swelling up, my knees are swelling up, my face is swelling up, my body's swelling up. And I, I don't, it's not like I'm sitting here eating burritos all day long. Nothing wrong with burritos. I fucking love burritos. Burritos are great. Give me a damn Paquito Moss burrito and God. I'm set for life. But see, you can see my fingertips are red. So there's, there's, um, it's, I can feel it like not moving, <sighs> but at the same time, I'm not moving. Because right. I like, if I wake up in the morning and my feet aren't working and I have to get to the bathroom, I get so upset that I just want to lay back in bed and put the TV on again. Yeah. So I'm also not moving. So those are things that I think a lot of people with MS who are new to it too, just want to close the curtains and say, fuck off to the world. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. And that's my honesty is I'm in the fuck off <laughs> and and you're allowed to. And again, I've ne I never I never did the fuck off. I was too afraid to do the fuck off. You know, I was I was working like you, but um, just I didn't think anybody would care to still want me around with this. Um, you know, I think it took a lot of like self work to find like find out that I still have the same value despite having MS. Like I didn't realize, I remember my husband one time was like, I said something, well, they wouldn't want me because of this. And he was like, why do you think you are less important because you have a disease? Like I just, and I didn't even realize that that was my way of thinking. Like I, I, I and also really accepting the fact that this has rendered me somewhat disabled. Like, you know, when you have a, when you grow up like you, Christina, I mean, like I grew up dancing and performing and on stage and like your body is your, your, your vessel of, of expression and, and everything and to feel so restricted and to feel like you can't do what you once did. Um, it takes, I don't know if you ever get over it, but it takes, it takes a lot to deal with. Yeah. It's, I think, you know, while this disease has has done a lot to my body, um, I think like the emotional and spiritual ride that it's taken me on, as as long and heavy and hard as it's been, I am. This is where maybe my twenty two years can come in handy. Is I do feel a lot of gratitude for it. Like who I am today, I am not sure I would be had I not. Yeah, I'm not there yet, James. Yes, I know. But I will say the other day, Sadie was asking me to show her like a perfect tondu or a perfect dégagé, right? And because we were watching Dance Moms and I was saying, oh, I feel nothing from this number, whatever. And I said, I wish someone would say to these dancers, push past that place, like where the toe and the feet go past into like a, a spiritual zone where your mm. hands don't just be beautiful, but be stretch out and be beautiful. So I, I was kind of showing her, you know, kind of falling over a little bit, but, and she just said to me, you still got it, mama. Oh. And my heart, like, I'm going to cry. Like I, my heart just broke. And because it was so hard for me to just show her that, but she she recognized, she goes, you still got it. And that's kind of, you know, the effect it has on our children seeing, you know, Sadie is 12 now. So she's been seeing me like this for two years. She lost her hiking partner, her dance partner, her tennis partner, all the things that we used to do together. She's lost that. And that's been an incredible 
you know, weight on her shoulders and trying to, you know, come in. And the only time she gets to hang out with mama is laying in bed at this point right now, right Right. now, right now. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to get out of this rut, you know, and I'm sure there are a lot of people that, you know, if they are listening to us, that that, that's this rut of self-loathing and self just giving up. Yeah. I don't want to give up for her. That's the most important thing. Of course, but also for you. I'm on, I'm on the back burner right now. That's <laughs> kind of where I'm at, to be really honest. I'm, I'm so far on the back burner, I but am. she is the thing that keeps me going. Well, we all need something until we get there. You know what I mean? And she's the coolest, so I understand why. And she's, I can't yeah. wait for you to meet her. <laughs> I did. I met her when you came to the pool. Don't you remember? Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Sorry. 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 Afternoon. Okay. Um, that's right. I'm sorry. That's right. But that was, she was still, she's changed so much since then, since the pool. Like she's, she's a big, she's definitely 12. her own human. That's yeah. very tough. And <laughs> of course she's your daughter. Yeah. She's not going to be a pussy. Oh no, we don't do pussy in this no, house. That's no. what I figured. That's what I figured. And if you if there are pussies in this house, they are unshaven <laughs> and disgusting you know, and not really showered. Isn't that back in? <laughs> isn't that back? Is that I just saw something um I saw something on Instagram that was saying like Gen Z's thing is like being like unkept and like not showering. Like that's like a like Oh my a, god, I've I so fit in. You're so Gen Z. You're so trendy. <laughs> even though I'm like really as Gen X as a person can be, but now I feel pretty cool. Yeah. I feel pretty uh, dope. Do people say that anymore? (laughs) Pretty dope. I I hope so. No, I don't think anyone does. (laughs) Well, before I, and that to wrap up the little sappiness of this, I will say that a turning point for me in this was allowing the harder feelings to sort of really live with me. Like for instance, doubt, doubt's a big one for me. I've had a lot of people over well-intentioned people over, you know, the past, however many years being like, you got to go to this doctor. You got to try this. You got to do this, 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 this. And I've been disappointed a lot. And so doubt has been, um, a big thing for me and I something I've always pushed away because I thought, oh, the doubt is why I'm not getting better. The doubt is why I'm not healing. The doubt is why nothing's working. And I had this turning point once where I was just like, you know what? No, I have every right to feel doubt. And I like allowed myself to like really sit with that negative feeling that I tried to always push away or judge myself for having. And in that process, I was able to like, let it go. But I think that- yeah you know, a lag we said, allowing yourself to really sit in the shit is hard. Yeah. I'm sitting in the shit. In fact, I'm very unapologetic to my friends. I don't have many that are around. I have two friends that come around and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm not emotionally available for you. Like I'm not like, if you come into my room and you start crying, I'm going to get bitter and angry because I honestly, I don't have it in me you to be like, bandwidth for let me right take now. you under my wing. I don't have any wings right now. You know, I'm a wingless bird. I am a flightless bird right now. And, and it feels really shitty to say that I've had to be very honest about the fact that I am, I'm not ready, you know, for that. But anyway, well, t- let's go back to you. What, tell me about your name again. Let's just really do a hard left right now. Back to. Okay. We're Apple. yeah. Okay. So it's really, <laughs> really um, poetic. So my mom saw this Andrew Wyeth painting in New York when she used to live in New York and it's called Christina's world. And it's a beautiful painting of a crippled woman crawling across a field to her home in the distance. Um, it's if anyone wants to look it up, Christina's world, Google, 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 there you go. Never thought about that in my whole life. And I was cleaning some stuff up the other day and I saw it again. I have it um, framed down in my basement where I have a pool table and stuff. And there it was. And there's someone crawling to her home. 
And my mom actually wrote a song called Christina's World. Her name's Nancy Pretty. You can also Google that, P-R-I-D-D-Y. Um, then she named a dog after the painting. And then she named me after the dog, but uh, actually after the painting. So it, it's all the things, like wow. dog painting me. Um, but it's a disabled woman without use of her legs. And I was down there actually playing pool with my friend the other night. <laughs> And uh, not like I have a bunch of people here. I have like people that take care of me on the weekends, like two friends. And uh, we were playing pool and there it was. And it like, it like stabbed me in the heart of, mm. of uh, that. But there's also kind of this beauty and hope in the painting as well. Yes. I was going to say, I'm sure there's more to that painting than just this one. Like, well, her name was Christina. She was a real person. I think her name was Christina Olson and Andrew Wyeth knew her and she had no use of her legs and who knows why she didn't have use of her legs because it's from I have chills you know painted in wow. like the 1930s or something wow yeah. wow I don't think that was a really fun story but that's no. kind of what I was named that was how I was named <laughs> I, re- I I I appreciate you telling me that story that's that's crazy um Look, one of the other things that you and I talked about, like with this podcast, the purpose of this podcast, well, we wanted to start this podcast, obviously. You you, you be the guy. You be the guy. uh, Anytime. Is, you know, obviously we both share and we live with this disease, but um, we persevere. We push through. We're still living. We've got children. We've got dreams. We've got hopes, but we're honest and we're real in the moment. And we live moment to moment sometimes, day to day, minute to minute, all you can focus on. And I think we're interested in not only like our daily lives with this, because we've talked about the fact that, and I've mentioned this to you, I have a really good friend who said to me once, like when we ran into each other, I was like, hey, how are you? She was like, "Uh, do you really want to know? Yeah. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, I don't know if you realize how are you is probably the most loaded question you can actually ever ask anybody. And it stopped me in my tracks. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Because when you and I speak, when you and I get on the phone and we say, how are you? We're Next like thing fucked. you know, we're like two <laughs> hours later and we yeah. just, we're, we're going on because we're being, we're being real. And we're saying, well, today this, and that anyone could say that anyone. And I, I have a personal interest in, you. But most people don't want to know how you are. They or don't. It's not that they don't want to know. They maybe just can't handle what you're about to give them. No, that's exact. But that's what I mean. Like I was actually um, someone that I kind of trusted in my life that was a friend, quote unquote, um, left a message on someone's machine about like how I was so woe is me because she would ask me how I w- was and I would say how I was. But apparently it was too woe is me for that person. So then I got scared of mm. being honest about how I was. I was like, well, I guess other people can't handle it. And that was actually an agreement I made with myself many years ago, like in relationships, like the dude needs it more than I do. Like they need the attention more than I do. Like I already get all the attention. They need it more than I do. So I kind of put myself back. But like to hear it from another girl, I was like, wow, that's really fucked up that yeah. I can't just say how I feel. And that put a boundary between me and other people when they ask how I am. So I put my little mask on and went, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm dealing. No. Fine, as people know, is fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. So there oh, you go. No, I know. I learned something new today. Thank you. Didn't you know? You didn't I know did, that? I did not know. <laughs> fucked up, but insecure, neurotic, and emotional. That's how this, you are. This is a podcast where we're going to ask you, how are you? Yeah. And we're prepared to listen. Mm-hmm. And because that's who we are. And if anything, that's what this terrible disease has taught us to really appreciate, to sit with, be present with pay attention to there's no ignoring anything when you have ms there's no ignoring anything when you have a chronic illness but more than anything what somebody reminded me and i have to remind myself constantly though is like everybody has something yes like 
And not, and I'm also saying like MS is not your and I's only thing. We've got a lot of things. Everybody has things that they carry with them everywhere. And I will say it sucks a lot of the time that our thing is on the outside. So like people, you almost have to talk about it or people ask about it a lot or, or it's right there, oh. but it has really taught me to be very, to get, be comfortable with being vulnerable. See, you are my hero because I look at you and I see this poised, beautiful woman and I'm like this dirty piece of shit in my bed going, I just want to watch Bravo and nothing wrong with Bravo as we will get to uh, in some me. times how much Bravo Those are the only people means... I want guests on this podcast. So <laughs> no, that's, no, it's going to be the only people that I'm going to be friends with for the rest of my life. And we're going to have them on our show, which, you know, I've got their digits, personal digits. Um, <laughs> but I don't know how to do this yet, James. I don't know how to do this yet. And well, I, that's what I'm, I'm here for you for, I know, but also I think we're here for anyone who, you know, I've, I've, I've now become, you know, when I had cancer, I became kind of the go-to for like anyone who knew anyone who had cancer called me mm -hmm. like I'm some kind of fucking authority right. on the fact I helped so many women through their mastectomies and stuff like being there, you know, three o'clock in the morning, you want to call me, you want to talk about it. Great. And I could do that. But I've been asked recently about people with MS to talk to them. And I can't because I'm not on the other side. And the thing is, there is no other side yeah. for me right now. Yeah. There's no other side. Yeah. You know, cancer, they got rid of. Right. I don't have to deal with it. Yeah. This, this is my forever. Yeah. So I don't know how to speak to someone and inspire them or help them through it or whatever the fuck. Like, I'm well, like, yeah, guess, not, guess what? It's crap. That's not your responsibility. And I don't think that's I know, why but it's people like, I are feel going like it's to like, you. Blah, 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 you know? Well, just, I think, yes. Look, people are like, I have MS. Tell me what to do. There's no hand. Give me the doctors. Can you get right. me into your doctor? Can it? No, I, I actually can't. Right. I'm sorry. I get it. No, I don't. I'm laying in bed crying. So I don't know how to help you. And that's a boundary. There you go. That's a fucking that's a boundary. boundary. Yeah, my boundary because is like, please don't call me about your, I, I can't with your. Well, that was a thing too. Like when I came out about it, I was the first person like young. You were. I come out about it, you know, and, you know, and then there was Selma and everybody, but like it, I, I had to learn very quickly like oh just because i'm a whatever level celebrity like this is not my i'm not like responsible to be the person the spokesperson of an advocate no like i i'm living with it like it's not like i it was something in the past and i can share with you right like i'm still going through it I will I am I happy to be open and honest and as encouraging as I can be of 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 what I found to help me deal with this? Absolutely. Right. When I feel good enough to do that. Right. That's what I was going to say. Like, I've been invited to all these things. Right. And I'm like, I can't be an advocate. I can barely advocate for myself right now. And until I can advocate for myself, I cannot be a poster child for you for, for this because I'm just going to be a sobbing mess and go, this sucks. I'm not going to be able to be an inspiration in any way, shape or form at this moment. It's not going to happen. But here's why you are an inspiration. Here's why to me, anybody's an inspiration because you're fucking living with it. Like, but, and that's what I mean. Like we're all living with things. That's what we just said. You know, we're all living with things and sometimes people don't wish to share them. And that's, a boundary great that's cool but like for us we don't have a choice right because it's it's so physical it's so out there it's so there it's or it's the reason why we're not here or you're right. you're not doing how many of that here. um copy of that book from that one lady to have you gotten from people which one i'm not gonna say her name oh oh the you know what i'm talking about i had a, i was at work between takes between takes a director i thought was coming to give me direction and was like have you listened to this person and their podcast and i'm like really <sighs> between takes are you gonna tell me 
the diet I need to be on right now. Come seriously, on. Like, like I can't. I get it, but it also no, like, it's lovely and it's lovely. It's, it's people lovely trying to love and it's on sweet us, and I yeah. get it. But also but. too, I'm like. I walk the way I walk. I get it. I'm sorry if it makes you feel like uncomfortable, but like, I, this is it. This is how I move. Like, I'm sorry if, you know, like, I, I also think there's like this point that I get to where I'm like, I have to stop feeling like I need to fix myself. Yeah. Oh, you know? I know. I, I, I've had friends recently being like, just, I hope you're just taking care of yourself. I'm like, what else would I be doing? I'm not sitting here eating Doritos and shooting heroin. I'm like living each day by the moment because I don't know what next moment's going to happen. I don't know if one day I'm going to wake up and my feet are completely numb and I'm going to fall over, or maybe I'm going to have a day where I walk through New York city and get on the subway, which I did a couple months ago. And it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The next day my body said, thanks, but no thanks. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, like, sure. I can, eat this. I mean, I've recently found out because of MS, I have a stomach, like a, a GERD. GERD is a really What's fun a GERD? symptom. GERD. GERD. Or Crohn's or like MS can, can present itself as Crohn's, GERD, wow. or celiac. Wow. And all of a sudden, I don't know if you know this. I didn't know this. No. Found it out because I was in the hospital four times in the last year. I do For know vomiting that, profusely. And it's just a symptom of MS. It's like <sighs> my intestines were like, bing, bang, boom, ding, 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 ding. Nope, can't eat anything. So now I'm off. Now I'm vegan again, which I always have been a vegetarian, but now I'm like, I can't have anything. Wow. Otherwise I'm going to puke. Like as if this isn't hard enough. Now you just got to, now you got to restrict the food you eat. Like, come on, this isn't fair. It's a very, it's a very individual. It's a very, as, as we're going to, I learn. ate pizza yesterday. I don't really care. And I had diarrhea right. today. So there you go. <laughs> well, you know, I paid my price, but it was it's delicious. All, it's all about balance. <laughs> um, but we're going to learn as this goes, MS is very personal. It's very individual. It affects everybody very differently, but yeah. Yes. This podcast, Which as you were just going to brings, say. brings it to our point. Yes. What is our point? The name of our story. What is it? Messy. It's so messy. So messy. But it's a beautiful mess. It's a funky it is a mess. Beautiful mess. It's it's an ever changing mess. It's it's messy. It's messy. It's messy. But that's okay. M S E. You'll learn. So, Christina's the punny one here. I'm so punny. I'm so. I can't punny. wait I'm for sorry. all the puns that you're going to bring out. There's going to be so many. It's it's uh, going to get real awkward. I, well, I <laughs> it's my favorite. This is my favorite vibe. What do you mean? Give me an awkward Just vibe awkward. every day. Yeah, I have so That's many things to discuss, and I we hope have, people yes are listening and going. Oh my god, I was going to say something really quickly. Really, yeah, no, you don't have to be quick. It's not going to be a show constantly talking about MS. No. I had a friend who was a public figure who was going through cancer and I said to her, be honest about your journey because don't say I'm a warrior, I'm a this, I'm a that. And this was my advice. This was just me because I knew that by her being honest with it, someone was going to feel less alone. Mm -hmm. And then also feel empowered mm -hmm. in that moment. And I think that by what we're talking about is we're not sitting here going like, get on the bike. Yes, get on the bike. Actually get on the bike if you can, but don't, if it's dangerous, don't fuck around with that. But go to, to the MS honest, gym. Go. Oh yes. At the MS gym on Instagram is our hero, mm -hmm. Trevor Wicken. Mm -hmm. And um, he is, He's changing the lives of so many people. If you're going to do anything, go to the MS gym. Yeah, Sorry, go to I, didn't the... mean to, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, go. No, you talk. Talk no, about I'm Trevor because we love done. him so much. I Trevor's miss him. I haven't... He's one of the most knowledgeable. Yeah, let this be the little, every every week we'll give you one little nugget of of healing. Okay, right? We're not going to push things the way other people are. But maybe we can just give like one nugget that's like helped us each week. This week, let's give Trevor. Trevor is a hero, an angel who 
literally after 22 years of living with MS finally made me understand what the hell was happening inside my body and how I could and what neuroplasticity was and what how I could override certain things that have felt quote unquote lost or weakened. He has empowered me to feel like there's room to grow and get better. Um, yeah. But without like expectations, like I'm going to run again or I'm going to this, just like connected has connected me and redefined my relationship with my body, which has not been a healthy one for quite some time. I've, I've felt quite betrayed by it for so long. Um, he, he's the best. And he, we love him. he literally, there's like a whole system like from day one, whether you're in a wheelchair or whatever it is, like he will guide you through a year long process of physical therapy, basically. And yep. you, Christina, who turn, introduced me to him on Instagram. So, And you still work with him. I haven't worked with him for a couple of months because I went into my um, I hate everything about life moment. That's okay. And he'll text me sometimes. He's like, hey, girl. He loves you. He loves I you. I know. I love him too. But yes, um, he, but I still like lay in bed and I do my little twisty toe uh, nerve awakening things mm -hmm. like for people, you know, who have this. For anyone who's listening who doesn't have MS, um, we're going to talk about other stuff. We will we're talk about other shit. What kind of guests are we going to have? Um, bravo. Bravo liberties. Bravo liberties. <laughs> bravo liberties. Some friends, some friends that we've worked with, some friends. Some that good people met, that we adore. Really, yeah. Only good people. There's only good people on the messy podcast. No assholes. And so it is. And so it is. And we will, we will end with and so it is, but we should we give them the, what and so it is means to us just yes. once so we can yeah. explain it. So and so it is, is happens to be tattooed on my wrist, soon to be tattooed on your foot, correct? Yep, my right foot, and, my good leg. And so it is, is an affirmation. It is um, how we would believe to end a prayer or a wish or whatever it is because it's, is a trust in the universe. It's what else? Christina, help me. It's, um, I've been going to a church called Agape for mm. almost my whole life. Um, people may know Reverend Michael Beckwith. We don't need to yeah. get into that, but we love, him. love the Reverend Michael. And so it is actually what Amen means in Arabic. I think. Yep. Look it up pretty damn sure. It just means, and it's so, and it, it is so, it is That's so. Right. It is what we are affirming for ourselves. Mm -hmm. It is so. The prayer that we are doing, it is so. There's not a begging. There's not a pleading. There's, it is so. It's a trust. And so it is. It's faith. It's trust. Yes. And you want to do a card reading? Okay. Yeah. So are we, I, I'd like to. You do yours. I'm going to run and get mine. Okay. So Go. I like to pick these inspirational cards every once in a while and be, you know, cheesy like that. So uh, we will always leave you with our inspirational card of the week. Um, and this week's says this, we don't receive wisdom. We must discover it for ourselves after a journey that no one can take for us or spare us. Ain't that the fucking truth? Ain't that the truth? Now I'm going to do these Eckhart Tolle ones. Do it. So say what, say when. Ready, go. Okay. <laughs> oh shit what is it <laughs> the dogs are barking okay listen to this every time you walk up and down the stairs in your house or place of work play coast sorry I can't even read I'm laughing too hard Pay close attention to every step, every movement, even your breathing. Be totally present <laughs> so oh. we don't fucking fall down them. Fuck you, Eckhart Tolle. Wait, literally? That's what it said? That's what literally. You said stop. You know what? That was meant for this moment. That was meant for this <laughs> moment. I'm going to breathe every time I go up and down the damn steps. <laughs> we walk up and down the stairs. 
Okay. And so Thanks a lot. It is. And so it is. This show is executive produced by Christina Applegate, Jamie Lynn Siegler, and Allison Bresnick. Our audio engineer is Josh Windish. If you want to show us some love, don't forget to leave the show a rating or review. Hi, it's Jamie. Thanks for listening. I just want to let you know I am a paid spokesperson for Novartis, but this podcast is independent from my collaboration with Novartis.